We are now moving into section two of seminar one entitled The Topic of the Imaginary, and the title of the first lecture in this section is by the same name. Lacan begins this lecture by acknowledging the enormity of the task at hand and identifies a point of confusion or even contradiction concerning the ego. On the one hand, the ego is what refuses the real and stagnates development. It is the freezing of the movement of signifiers. On the other hand, it is what allows the real to make its appearance. How do we reconcile this apparent conflict, and what role does the symbolic play as it concerns the relationship between the imaginary and the real? Lacan presents a model based on an optical apparatus as a metaphor for understanding the relationship between the imaginary and real. He chooses a model from optics as images can be either virtual or real, but also virtual images can seem real and real images can seem virtual. Lacan offers the example of a rainbow, which is purely subjective, virtual, having uh, no objective correlate, and yet it can be objectively recorded by a camera. The imaginary and real, though distinct, are found to be fused at certain points. Here we see the image of the optical apparatus. It includes a concave mirror housed within a half-sphere container. In front of the mirror is a hollowed box with a bouquet of flowers hanging upside down from the top inside of the box. We then have an eye positioned in just the right location to create the illusion of a vase that is filled with flowers. As such, we never see the real bouquet, only a phantom one, which is a reflection of the real flowers onto the concave mirror. This model offers a metaphor for thinking about the relationship between the imaginary and real within psychoanalysis. The primitive ego, like the imaginary bouquet in the vase, arrives by splitting off from reality in this case, the instincts and desires represented by the real bouquet. This primitive ego eventually becomes aware of its body, represented by the box, acquiring an imaginary mastery over it prior to a real mastery. This imaginary mastery marks the first moment of seeing and thinking about oneself as other than we are, giving birth to the beginnings of alienation. It also provides the first form whereby the subject can locate what does and does not belong to the ego. Finally, the eye represents the subject. Just as the positioning of the eye to the apparatus greatly affects how the illusion appears, so too the relation between imaginary and real depends on the position of the subject, and that position is established by its place in the symbolic world, the world of speech. At this point, Lacan returns to a case study originally presented by Melanie Klein. This child, who acquired some mastery over language, cannot express himself, cannot make a call. The mechanism by which the subject comes to locate himself in language has been interrupted at the level of speech. The consequence is a fusion of the imaginary and real for him. As such, he's indifferent to everything. He doesn't play, he doesn't register others in any way. Uh, different than would be the case for any other object. The symbolic is necessary for creating a separation between imaginary and real. By being properly positioned in the symbolic, the subject acquires the right amount of distance to view one's ego and to contain the real by not allowing the ego to serve as a gateway for it.